Hello all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. In this investigation, we will be taking a closer look at the physical characteristics of the Tower, the legendary heroes of the Matoran universe. From the storyline and additional details given by Greg Farshti, we know a lot about the bodies of the Tower already ranging from their physical size to the organic versus mechanical breakdown of their body parts. There are, in fact, a whole host of different factors related to the bodies of Toa that can be inferred from the canon details. Fellow Biotuber Hiroa Nuva has a fantastic video on the subject, and it is one that I would highly recommend to fans of this channel to check out. However, from a scientific perspective, there is one key characteristic that we do not know, and that is the mass of the average Toa. Mass is a key measure in science, and is defined as a dimensionless quality representing the amount of matter in a particle or object. The mass of an object is measured in kilograms, and is a key measure in almost every equation relating to physical matter, and so determining the mass of a typical Toa will be very useful in the future as our investigations here at the Knowledge Tower go on. Therefore, this investigation will try to determine the value for a Toa's mass, and, in a first for the channel, we will also be performing some practical experiments in order to come to a result. But how would we even begin to calculate the mass of a Toa? Let's start with what we already know. From the Bionicle canon, we know that Toa are biomechanical in nature, being made up of a mixture of mechanical and biological components. On top of their biomechanical bodies, they also all wear metallic armour and kanohi masks, with all components of their bodies, armour and masks being made up of different kinds of the artificial substance known as protodermis. Delving deeper into the details, we also know the following two key points. One. On average, Toa are 1.6 bio tall, which equates to 2.19 meters in real-world measurement. And two, Toa are normally made up of approximately 85% mechanical parts, with the remaining 15% being made up of organic components, such as muscles and organs. These two facts are our starting point. If we can extrapolate the volume of a standard Toa using the average height as an indicator, and if we can estimate the density of the mechanical and organic components of a Toa's body, we can combine both these measures via this equation to find their mass. But before we do that, we first need to pick a Toa to represent our standard, from whom we can then start to calculate the volume. The different set designs over the years mean that each would have a different final measurement for volume, so to remove the uncertainty from this, one body type needs to be chosen to represent our standard Toa. One-off designs, such as Helrix and Krakua, were discarded, as was the Toa Matter design, as the story suggests that it was a body type that was unique to that team, leaving the Metru and Inaika builds left to choose from. A popular fan theory suggests that because the Inaika design was used for the Glatorian sets, and because the Great Beings based the Toa off of the Glatorian in story, then it's possible that the Inaika design was the standard early in Matoran universe history, with the Metru design becoming more prominent later. While this would make both body types equally valid options, the Metru type was ultimately chosen, because it has the most examples of Toa that were likely transformed into that body type by normal methods, with only Jovan in the Inaika build not being given that body by abnormal means. Now that a set design has been selected, the next step was to try to determine the volume of that design, and the best way to do that was to find the volume of an actual set with that design, which then could be scaled up to the true size of a Toa. Searching through the sets available in my collection, Toa Likan was selected as our stand-in for the standard Toa. Now that that was done, it was time to leave the realm of theoretical calculations and move into the world of physical measurements. To do this, I ended up starting with one method before discarding it for another. The reason why was... well, that'll become clear. At first, I decided to use the equation from earlier. 
If I could find the mass of the set and the density of the plastic used, I could rearrange the equation to find the volume. Thus started an evening of researching types of plastic used in bionicle sets, finding the density of each and then separating the parts out into those plastic types and weighing each group, before performing the calculation for each group and adding them all together. It was a complex methodology, but it got me a result. Happy with the effort I put in, I told a friend of mine about it, who just so happens to be an actual scientist. His response? Why didn't you just dunk the set into water and then measure the volume of the water displaced by it? <sighs> an object submerged into water displaces an amount of water equal to its volume. Of course it does. And that method is far easier to measure accurately too. Okay, so, in my defence, it has been a long time since I had done anything to do with fluid mechanics, and I had simply completely forgot about that way of finding the volume of an object with a complex shape. But, given its higher accuracy, I really couldn't bring myself to go with my old calculation anymore. So, I ordered some equipment off the internet and went back to the beginning. After that little bit of peer review, this was my amended experimental setup. Filling a container that had graduated milliliter markings with water, and then carefully putting the Toa Lican set into the container, the water displaced by the set caused the overall water level in the container to rise. By subtracting the old water level from the new one, the volume of water displaced by the set could be measured. The amount of water displaced was equal to 80 milliliters, and given that one milliliter of water has a volume of one centimeter cubed, the displaced water, and hence the Lican set, has a volume of 80 centimetres cubed, or 0 0.00008 metres cubed. However, this is just the volume of the set. We still need to translate this to the volume of Lican in the story. To do this, let's first compare the height of the set to the canon height. The Lican set is 20 centimetres tall, compared to the cannon height of 2.19 metres, making Lican 10.95 times taller in story than his set counterpart. But we can't simply multiply the set's volume by 10.95 to get Lican's volume, as volume does not scale linearly with height. Instead, it follows the square cube law, meaning that the volume of an object increases proportionally to the cube of its height instead. Therefore, to find the volume of the full-scale Lican, we need to use this equation, which tells us that the full-scale volume is equal to the original volume multiplied by the cube of the new height divided by the old height. Plugging in the numbers, we get a volume for the full-sized Lican of 0 0.10503459 meters cubed. A quick sense check shows that this is slightly larger than the volume of an average human male, which is at 0.07 meters cubed. This makes sense given that Toa are larger and bulkier than humans, so I was happy with that measure. Now that we have the volume of our standard Toa determined, we can start to look at the density. In the Science of Nova Blasts video, the density of iron was used as a stand-in for the density of metallic protodermis. That was sufficient for that video, however, we can take a deeper look into this here. Metallic protodermis comes in different types in the story, and these different types are likely to have different densities, just like different metals have different densities in the real world. When building a biomechanical being like a Toa, the great beings would most likely want to use a version of metallic protodermis that was both very strong and very light to ensure that the Toa was tough enough to withstand any punishment their body might go through, while at the same time not being so heavy as to overly weigh them down. Of the naturally occurring metals, titanium has the highest strength to weight ratio, providing the same amount of strength as steel but at only 40% of the weight. However, this can be improved further through artificially mixing metals into alloys. In the research for this video, a scientific paper by Yusuf et al. was found that described an alloy mixing aluminium, lithium, magnesium, scandium, and titanium. This alloy was described in the paper as having a strength to weight ratio 
not equaled by any other metallic material known, with its density being comparable to that of aluminium. This alloy has a density of 2,670 kilograms per meter cubed, compared to aluminium's 2,710 kilograms per meter cubed. Because of this, this alloy was chosen as the stand-in for the type of metallic protodermis that makes up the mechanical components of a Toa's body, and therefore its density of 2,670 kilograms per meter cubed will be used as the density of the mechanical components for the rest of the calculations. As for the organic components, the density of human muscle tissue was chosen as a stand-in for organic protodermis, with this being 1,059.9 kilograms per meter cubed. Now, when we determined the volume of the Lican set earlier, it included his mask and armour within that measurement, as the armour in story does not directly correlate with the armour parts that are removable on the set. However, it is not fully clear from the canon whether the 85% mechanical components of a biomechanical being actually includes their armour and mask. We will need to know this before moving forward. By using the sources links from Biosector01 wiki, we can see that the 85-15% to split comes from a blog post by Greg Farshti way back in 2009. In this post, he compares the biological to mechanical component split of the biomechanical beings of the Matoran universe to the largely organic beings of Spherus Magna, stating that the split in the Spherus Magna residence is the other way around, 85% organic to 15% mechanical implants. Crucially, however, he also states that this does not include the armour and helmets worn by these largely organic beings in that split because they are removable. While he does not specifically make this distinction for the biomechanical beings like the Toa, their armour and masks are also removable in story, so by following the same logic, they should not be included in the 85-15% to split in this investigation, and so will have to be separated out. Assuming that the armour worn by Toa averages out to a similar average thickness to medieval European suits of armour, this means that a Toa's armour and masks are on average 2mm thick. If we assume that the 2.19m height given for a Toa includes their armour, then we can remove the armour from the height dimension and rerun the volume calculations from earlier to get an armourless volume of a Toa at 0 0.102. 18313 meters cubed, with the volume of the armour and masks being 0 0.0028546 meters cubed, or around 3000 centimeters cubed. We can now do the final calculations needed to determine the mass of a Toa. 85% of the armourless volume of a Toa, multiplied by the density of our metallic protodermis stand in, gives a mass of 231 kilograms. 15% of the armorless volume of a Toa, multiplied by the density of our organic protoderma stand-in, results in a mass of 16.24558492 kilograms. And the volume of the armor and mask, multiplied by the density of the metallic protoderma stand-in again, gives us a mass of 7.6133982 kilograms. Adding those three together and rounding to two decimal places, we get a final mass value of a Toa of being 254.86 kilograms, or 247.25 kilograms when not wearing their mask and armor. For context, that's approximately the same weight as a fully grown male grizzly bear. Having this measure will come in very handy when performing future calculations, as it lets us explore areas in more detail than we could before. Going back to an old calculation, if our standard Toa was wearing a Kakama, then travelling at the mask speed of Mach 6, they would have the equivalent kinetic energy of 540 million joules, or around 0.13 tonnes of TNT. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. That mask is powerful. Also, given the fact that a Toa can canonically lift more than one ton, then this means that a Toa could carry three of their brothers and sisters easily. A useful thing for them to know going into battle. Well, 
that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us next time for another Bionicle Science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower.